Hello guys, welcome to our channel. Today we are going to watch Sean Locke on his wild pub banter. And we have seen Sean Locke and he's so so hilarious to watch and what happened with him in the pub. It will be very fun to watch. So let's get into the video. I tell you actually one, one thing I've worked out actually, it wouldn't necessarily reduce my drinking, but definitely reduce trips to the pub. I believe, I think it's a lack of banter in the home, in the domestic environment, you know? Mm. Like, sometimes I'll say to my wife something like, how long do you think we could all live if we only ate toffee apples? You know, just putting it out there. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And she'll roll her eyes and carry on doing something worthwhile. Ah, oh, no banter. But in the pub, you get 20 minutes out of that. Uh, yeah. It's a bloody good question, Sean. <laughs> You've got the vitamin, you've got the fibre from the apple, you've got the energy, glucose from the toffee. I wonder if the stick pound up into a paste makes a carb. Mm. <laughs> we had a great one the other day. We were talking about what's the filthiest teaspoon you've ever seen. Oh, oh nice topic. What a night. <laughs> Let's have a lock in. It was brilliant. <laughs> At what point does a lager top become a shandy? Oh. <laughs> Who? Would you rather share a sleeping bag with? This we did the other day. Who would you? You've got a choice. You're right. You've got one night in a sleeping bag. You've got Ronnie Wood from the Rolling Stones. Okay. Or Jeremy Vine from BBC Radio 2. Ronnie Wood for one, or Jeremy Vine. Any takers on this one? Yeah. Actually, uh, you had a lot better response than the one my wife had. I asked her. She turned her back to me, walked over, looked out of a window, and her shoulders went. Ah, oh, disappointed. <laughs> no banter. She muttered something about, I suppose we've got kids and it's better. To... <laughs> <laughs> the, actually, the right answer, people who said Jeremy Vine, that's the correct answer. You know, a lot of people choose Ronnie. They think Ronnie's a bit of a character. They're all the anecdotes, you know, a bit of a character. Of course, what they're forgetting is just how bony Ronnie is. <laughs> Ronnie, Every Ronnie. part of Ronnie is a sharp, jaggedy, pointy edge. His <laughs> arse is like a piece of flint. Naked, Ronnie looks like a box of KFC when you're throwing the bones back in. Right? Oh. He's held together with bits of chicken skin, Ronnie Wood. <laughs> and he'll be shaking because he's given up the pills and the booze. Like that. <laughs> ah, Ronnie, ah, ah. Yeah, I've thought about this stuff, yeah. Whereas Jeremy Vine, tedious bastard, dull, boring, pointless man, like a warm column of pissy air. <laughs> but you get the feeling, when he shuts his eyes, eight hours, straight through, no bother. Oh, yeah. People say to me, why are you having a go at Jeremy Vine? I say, because I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Seems a good reason, enough. I do, I don't like Jeremy Vine, I'll tell you why. Because you know, he does that Radio 2 show, and they have these, they have these debates on Radio 2. We're going to have debates today, and they're not debates. They're just, they're just ways to wind the country up, make the country an unhappier, angrier place, don't they? Yeah. Oh. oh. What? 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 I what think was that, that was like, that sounded like 8th century Norse. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jeremy Vine, I've just realised. <laughs> It's Jeremy Vine. He's, he's dressed up as a, a drunken old mad cockney. <laughs> I'm sneaking. I've heard about this routine. <laughs> I'll have a couple of super tenants. <laughs> I won't say anything he can pick up on, cos, you know... And then he'll just disappear into the fog like Jack the Ripper. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, you know, the, the debate, you have those debates on the show, and they don't, they just make the country an unhappier place. Like, it just winds people up, it attracts nutters to phone in. Like, they'll have a debate, they say, today we're talking about sex education. Some people say it happens too soon. Other people say it doesn't happen soon enough. Are they right? Should we have sex education in nurseries? Play what? groups? What? No. Should teddy bears have genitals? No! no. And there'll be someone at home going, what? Teddy bears with cocks? <laughs> no! 
Manu, they could have put cogs on the teddy bears. And they phone it. And they pick weird subjects to have debate about. Like they'll, they'll pick something like, you know, there, there was one, there was, there was this, this, this burglar who'd objected in court to being called a coward. The prosecution had called him a coward. He said, I'm not a coward. So they started discussing it, saying, well, is, is he right? Are, are burglars brave? Should we admire them? What, really? Are they, are they just entrepreneurs? Entrepreneurs. <laughs> <laughs> people going, And sometimes they do this trick where they leave a detail out to make a little bomb go off in your head. Something like that. <laughs> it's like, um, uh, who's to blame for... We're talking about the obesity crisis. Who's to blame? Is it the government? Is it the NHS? Is it the food industry? And they know loads of people at home going, but he hasn't mentioned the fat people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Today we're talking about binge drinking. Why do you do it? Are you sad, lonely, depressed? Do you have low self-esteem? Do you need alcohol to enjoy social situations? And that's how I burnt my ear. <laughs> wow. I think one of the things that I'm most known for is my inquiring mind. I think that's one of the things people always say about me. Here comes Sean with his inquiring mind. The other day I was watching the television, I was watching, you know those, those compare the market, compare the meerkat ads? I was watching one of those and I thought, how come that's okay that they've got a Russian, Eastern European accent? How come that's fine? Nobody objects to that. I was thinking, if those meerkats were Chinese, they'd be uproar, wouldn't they? If they came out and went, you want cheaper car insurance? <laughs> <laughs> you go, comparemarket.com! <laughs> you bloody idiot! Whoa, what are you doing? You can't do that. Or they were Mexican. If you want to compare me cats, <laughs> compare me cat.com. You can compare me cats like my sister. <laughs> Well, really, Mirka should be an African voice, shouldn't it? For Chipaka insurance. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Stop him now. And the reason, the reason that I mention that is because I realised something quite profound the other day. I was at home, I was a bit bored. I wasn't wearing these clothes, I was wearing my normal clothes. I was a bit bored. I started checking the labels on my clothes. Oh, yeah, I do know I realised something like, at that moment, at that moment, I realised if it wasn't for the Chinese, I would have been naked. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is Chinese, yeah. All my clothes were made in China. Everything. Even my pants were made in China. Yeah? And they're not like Chinesey pants. They haven't got dragons on them or anything like that. <laughs> Just an ordinary pair of pants. Then I my phone was made in China, my telly was made in China, I've got an Ikea table, I assume Sweden. No, China. I'm, oh. out, I'm virtually Chinese. <laughs> the only thing I haven't got is the accent. Right? But if I start doing that, going, hello, I'm Sean Law, people go, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, I think, how can I possibly be racist? I bloody love China. I'm obsessed with the place. <laughs> Ideally, I'd live in a pagoda. Yeah? To be honest, I don't think you can be racist about a country that's more economically powerful than you anyway. In fact, the way our economy's going, soon it'd be racist to do our voices. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, no. People in Beijing go, hello, I'm from London. They'll go, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Not comfortable with that. Racism. And also, I don't think the Chinese are bothered what accents we're doing. All they want to know is, all they want to know is, how much shit we want. That's what they want to know. <laughs> how much shit you want? Much as you've got, we love it. Keep sending it over. Can't get it. Over. <laughs> okay. Make more shit. <laughs> you got enough shit yet? No, we just used up that lot you just sent us. Keep it coming. We love it. <clears throat> Bloody hell! Come on, no time for sleeping. Got to make shit for people in West. Oh. Can't even make their own fucking pants. <laughs> Hang on, how are you going to pay for all this shit? Uh, we were going to borrow the money from you. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> he dished both China and Britain at the same time. And also at the start, how he was talking about that pop culture and matter. Yes, actually that is missing. Whenever you are with your uh, like girlfriend or wife, whenever you are with them. So you normally cannot talk those kind of things. And you are always like, okay, like... 
talk normal or just talk romantic or these kind of things but the banter he was talking about is something that actually you can do only with your boys or with the person you are drinking with because that that these kind of topics like for example even politics also like you cannot discuss it with your girlfriend but when you go out with your friends and they are like you can just spend hours and hours discussing politics yeah and one thing i like about stand up comedy is like you can you can uh, you know pick any you know sensitive topics like in a fun way like mm. the way he talked about the sex education in nursery that was like crazy like if i'm if some, someone serious is talking about oh we need to introduce this and people should uh, kids should know about this i would be like what and the way he portrayed the whole thing was hilarious actually it was so 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 fun to watch so what did you guys think about it do let us know in the comment section below so do like share and subscribe bye, bye.